Hello and welcome back. If you follow the channel, you know that we recently opened the Soyuz navigation computer, better known as the Globus. Inside, we found an amazing analog computer powered by lots of gears and a very little bit of electronics. This oddly anachronistic yet magnificent instrument was used until 2002 in the Soyuz T and Soyuz TM capsule. Our unit, which we could tell from the markings, was made for the Apollo Soyuz mission, had suffered a big fall that had dislodged the main shaft, and its internal wiring had all been cut. We repaired the mechanical damage in episode 1 and figured out the damaged wiring in episode 2. So much so that we could power it up again and fly orbits around its gorgeous globe as it was originally meant to. But there is one more function that we have not yet revived, and it is an important one. This function is the landing point production. A feature so important that the instrument was kept flying until 2002 as a backup to the electronic systems. If we can make this landing function work again, we will have completed the restoration of our globus. So, Master Ken, you think you have uh, gotten through the secret of the landing? Yeah, I think I figured out how to wire up the Globus. You know, it wasn't easy because they cut all the wiring for the connector, but I've been tracing stuff out. I've made some incomprehensible diagrams, and so I think we're ready to power it up. So, basically, the idea is there's this landing motor which will rotate the globe to the landing position and rotate it back. Mm -hmm. And it's a DC motor, so it needs to be able to reverse the voltage. So it basically has this H bridge of, of panel switches to control the, which direction the current goes through the mo motor. It has a current sink um, transistor here, so we get a constant current through the motor. And then there's a couple switches, um, limit switches, to tell when it's reached the landing position and then when it goes back to the orbit position. Right. So on the little board back there, there's just the uh, current source for the, uh, the, the, the the current control for the motor. There's That's the transistor, and then relays. Four relays, and then there's um, some diodes f um, for um, back backflow through the back, back EMF protection yeah. right so there, it is not there's really not that much uh, yeah, yeah the most interesting part I, I think is here that as the globe rotates this arm will hit hit this limit switch when we've reached the landing position and then going back it will hit this limit switch when we get back to our orbit position so right. that's how it knows how far to, to rotate the globe okay and, and this um, th this one is adjusted by the front panel knob Mm -hmm. for, for how, how far it is till you land. So, thing 1A on ground. And 6A is power. Okay, let me get it from the front and then we got to do the landing light. Okay, camera, show us our landing position. Okay, so I'm going to switch it to the landing position mode. And there we rotate the head in the orbit. And then when I switch, switch it back to Earth orbit, it rotates back. Amazing! Well, that's the main function of, of this. This is why they kept it for so long. It was such a good backup for this calculation. Yeah. And then notice that we've, we've replaced the button because the other one was started to crack. 
and uh, actually it did crack we repaired it but we don't want to use the original button while we were working on this uh, so should we make the indicator actually okay. you, you, ca you can make the angle more and have it be even more impressive Try okay. It now. okay so now let's switch it to landing position yeah and we have a big rotation and then back to orbit note that the landing calculation performed by the globus itself is very limited you have to manually input a value for the landing angle which is the angle between the firing of the retro rockets and the landing point the calculation of the landing angle itself is a complicated affair and was done by computers on the ground. It was then relayed to the cosmonaut, which would input it in the machine. The globus does not calculate it, it just displays the result in a very beautiful way, I might add. Go for it, camarade. It works. And indeed it works beautifully. There is one more thing we need to add in order to get the full effect. The globus had a front light indicator, which is an electroluminescent light, the same technology that was used in the Apollo Disky. Ken figured out the relay wiring that controls the landing light, but we will have to wire in a high voltage AC supply to make it work. Where, where do I have to connect myself? You want to connect to these two terminals. Mm. This is high voltage, so okay, well, that's good. So I'm, I'm using a little uh, electroluminescent power supply. And we know this is an electroluminescent switch. So now we should have the light indication. We got this one. Uh, are you in, you are not in landing right now, right? Yeah, I'm in orbit mode. Okay, so let me... Okay, this is, this is landing without the light. Should we test yeah. that? Test that if that works. Okay. And on. Okay. And it tells me 20 milliamps. Alright. Should I land? Try to land. Hey! Yeah. We got the light. It says we have landed. All right, so we have it fully working now. Should I leave orbit? Yeah. And the light goes off. All right, so I have the cable in the way. And then go back. That's it, that's we have the globus fully functional, right? It does mm -hmm. everything it was supposed to do. Just just those clip wires we need to solder back. Yeah, so we have to find another globus with the correct oh. wiring and if only we knew somebody who had one or two. Yes. <laughs> Redo it again, uh, get get the landing position. That's the main function of this, right? That it could give you your uh, landing position. So it's very much a backup instrument. All right, so we are almost done with the globus. We just need to rewire the connector and we will be set. We'll be in orbit. All right, so that, now you land in Russia. Uh, barely, you, you, might do, you might go into China, be careful. Well, this is mostly it for our globus restoration videos. However, if you want to understand its mechanism in more detail, you should take a look at Ken's Globus blog post. He explains how the gearing works to calculate the orbit. You will see that the main calculating element is the differential adder, of which there are no less than 10 in the machine. I will link Ken's in-depth article in the doodly-doo. And also, dear unruly commenters, Trying to make a point that one nation is clearly ahead or behind by referring to this wonderful instrument 
You might consider that the US had a similar instrument in the Mercury spaceship, called the Earth Path Indicator. Yes, there are equally brilliant engineers in all countries coming up with similarly brilliant solutions, and that's what and whom we should celebrate. And on this good note, we'll see you in the next episode. And this is what it says in Russian, landing position? So something like that. Yeah, maybe it's fastened seatbelts, I'm not sure. <laughs>